Lifeway provides several different capabilities around content management. In this video, we're gonna focus in on one of those specific capabilities, which we refer to as the structured web content. What I've got here is a 7.3 Liferay DXP portal instance, and I'm logged in as the administrator. I'm gonna use this menu option to open the sidebar, and then I'm gonna choose the content and data section, followed by the web content section. Now, if I use this blue plus and I choose the basic web content option, what you'll see is I get a form that's rendered with a, a title field, some metadata information on the uh, right-hand side, and then really just one field in the main area called content. Now, what I often see people doing as part of their solutions is taking the, the content that they want to render and mixing the data and the view, so the HTML markup and the data itself together and simply pasting it into this area. Now, of course, Lifer is going to return the value of this field to the browser and the browser will in turn interpret the markup and you'll get what you're looking for, but there is a lot of downsides to using this kind of approach. For starters, if you use the basic web content structure to represent different types of content on your site, and then in the future you want to change the, uh, the, the, the data points that are associated with a particular piece of content, then you're kind of stuck because you've used this one structure for everything. More importantly though, using this approach doesn't allow you to separate the data that represents your content from the view, which means if you wanna render a piece of content using more than one representation, uh, say you know a summary view on the homepage versus a detailed view when you click through, then you don't have that capability. You have to actually create the content two separate times, once for the summary view and then once for the detail view. Now the idea behind structured content is that you separate, as I said, the data from the template. But let's understand how you would maybe understand what the data points are and how you would define a structure looking at an example. So let me go to the allrecipes.com website here. This is obviously a website that has tons of recipes. And you can see here on the homepage, I've got this series of tiles and they're all more or less the same, right? I have an image, I have what looks like the name of the recipe and they are hot, so I can click through to go to the recipe details. As an example, if I were to click on the Turkey Tetrazzini alla Stouffer's, I would end up on this page, and you can see that I have the same title and the same image, the same star rating, but there's a lot more information on this page than there was on the home page. For example, I've got this recipe metadata here, which tells me how long it takes to prep and cook, and so on and so forth. I've got a series of ingredients, I've got the directions for cooking, and then some nutritional facts at the bottom. So in this particular case, rather than taking this whole page markup and all and pasting it into that content field from the basic content, it makes more sense to actually define a structure that represents your recipe. I'll switch back to life rate and I'm going to go back to this view and I'm going to choose the structures tab in the middle. Now in advance of starting this recording, I did actually create my recipe structure just for expediency. If I click on it, we'll take a look at what it looks like. So of course my structure is called recipe so that every time I wanna add a new recipe to the system, I'm going to choose the recipe content type. Below I have this canvas of fields that have been added based on this palette of options over here on the left. Now I've got a basic text field for a quote. Uh, it is optional for the cases where someone hasn't yet made the recipe as an example, or people have made it but not shared any feedback. I then have this section called recipe metadata where I've grouped together a few fields that represent that info box that we saw to the right of the image. So the prep time, the cook time, and the total servings. So here's a really good example of adding this into the body field um, can be done, but it's better to do it this way because it allows me, for example, in the future to provide new functionality to my customers whereby they could do a search for any recipes that have a cook time between 10 and 20 minutes. If I place that kind of text into the content, area of the recipe rather than calling it out as a separate indexable field in the search index it makes it much more difficult to be able to provide that kind of filter or search option now below one more thing i want to show you is the ingredients and the directions now of course some recipes will have let's say four or five ingredients other more complicated recipes may have as many as 15 or 20. so how do you account for that situation well in this case what we've done is we've used a repeatable option on a field. And you'll see in a second what that 
it turns out to be when it's rendered, but effectively it lets the content administrator, the content creator, decide how many times they want to add an ingredient to a particular piece of web content. I do the same thing here for directions, except in this case, we're repeating both the step title as well as the direction for the step title. And then we finish it off with the nutritional facts, which in this case is actually using uh, the HTML text field or the rich text markup field so that you can do things like bold certain text, provide italics, maybe link out to other articles, that kind of thing. All right, so here's some basic data points from my recipe. What does it look like for our content creator? So I'm gonna go back to my web content tab. I use my plus, and this time I'm gonna choose recipe for my type. And when I do that, of course, what you can see is the fields that we just created on our structure showing up here. Now, I didn't add a title to my recipe structure. You might've been wondering why. And the reason for that is because all structures in LifeRay, regardless of which ones, which fields you add, are going to include some reserved attributes or basic attributes. For example, they're all gonna have a title, they're all gonna have a summary, they all have the option to have a feature image, that kind of thing. So there's no point adding a title field to my structure because I already have a title field that's provided for me by LifeRay. Uh, if I look through the list, you can see here's my section for the recipe metadata and my three fields that are indented, showing that they're grouped together under this heading. And if I look at the ingredients field, although I only have the one option, I have the option to add as many ingredients as I want. So if I have a recipe with four ingredients, I can have four fields, each one with whatever the ingredient is. If I have more ingredients, I'd simply add more. And if I add too many, I can use this minus to remove them. Of course, there's the minimum of one ingredient that has to be provided, otherwise you don't have much of a recipe. Same thing for directions where you can repeat the steps. And then at the bottom here, you can see this nutritional facts where you can have the rich mark, rich text markup. So again, that's basically the, the basics of web content structures. It really pays to have a look at the uh, sample designs or to work with an information architect to understand how the individual content that your site is going to be rendering is, is um, composed. And then turning that composition into these individual attributes so that you can separate cleanly the idea of the data that represents a piece of content from the view that's used to render it. Looking for more information on this topic or others? Check out our links in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.